elder abuse in long-term health care facilities is called an unchecked epidemic. But astute lawyering and now the U.S. Supreme Court may be changing the legal landscape. ALM's Gina Passarella has this. An aging population, a surge in nursing home residents, low-income employees and understaffing, a combination prime for litigation. The two most common injuries that you see are cases related to, to pressure sores or bed sores, and then the other big category of cases are fall cases. We see a lot of pressure sore cases where people are not being moved enough in their beds. And over the course of years, I've represented a lot of families that have had individuals in nursing facilities and have suffered severe injuries and, and sometimes died as a result of it. Uh, including hypothermia and things of that nature, which are really just, it's just awful. Although some long-term care facilities get high marks, there are more reports of severe injury and abuse. I think it's both understaffing, and I think it is poor training, and I think it is a toleration, a tolerance um, by management that poor care is being delivered. And any time you give anyone a profit motive to reduce services to increase somebody's revenue, you are going to lay the foundation for mistakes and poor care. Which can lead to lawsuits, though that may be easier said than done. You do have challenges as a plaintiff's attorney. Oftentimes, people might not want to bring the actions on behalf of the elderly because damages are somewhat limited. There's typically not a lost wage claim or any of those kind of typical traditional economic damages that you would see maybe in a more traditional medical malpractice suit. But some damages are better than none, especially when care is abusive or results in death. However, most nursing home residents and their families sign contracts with arbitration clauses, keeping them and the nursing home out of court. That could change. Last year, the Department of Health and Human Services stopped nursing homes from requiring residents to arbitrate their disputes. And although a federal court just blocked that rule, the U.S. Supreme Court is taking the arbitration issue up again, meaning aggrieved nursing home residents and their loved ones may still get their day in court. The care that we give as a society to our care-dependent people is the mark of a civilized and compassionate people. As the population ages and plaintiff's lawyers continue their outreach, all sides would agree nursing home litigation is likely to increase. The question is, where will that play out, whether it be in the courtroom or in the arbitration setting, and what role the Department of Health and Human Services will play? For the American Law Journal, I'm Gina Passarella.